The Premier League is back, so let's do a Liverpool season preview. Well, what's happening, everybody? Um, I hope you are all doing well. And if you haven't done so already, um, and if you like my content, please like, comment and subscribe if you can. I'd really appreciate it. Um, just like to get to see I'm building my accounts on YouTube. I have a big massive account on TikTok. I'm starting to go on Instagram as well. Um, the same username, the Dark Pete, but yeah, I'd really appreciate it if he's calling, if he's like my content. And as I said, I hope you're all doing well. But let's get into the video. The Premier League's back. Um and I'm gonna say I'm looking forward to it, but it's a bit of a tricky scenario at the minute with like being a Liverpool fan because we're seeing everybody else saying players and strengthening. And I know like Sir Arna Slat has said you don't need the same players to strengthen. And I understand where he's coming from. Um because you can't improve players by training. But I believe it's just standing still and probably going backwards. Because a discount, Thiago. Thiago never featured whatsoever. But Joel Matip, for example. Joel Matip, for me, was a key player for Liverpool. Um, yes, was troubled by injuries. But even last year, I think he had a pretty decent role to play for the club until he got injured. So they've lost him. I know Quance has stepped up. But still, I still think they're weaker in that position. Because they've lost Joel Matip. And that's just getting back to that point. About needing to buy players. And as I'm actually making this video. <laughs> I'm seeing reports on Twitter. That the deal for that Georgian goalkeeper of Valencia. The deal is apparently off. Because Liverpool don't want to be paying 40 million euros or something. Um... So yeah, it's just a really frustrating time to be a Liverpool fan getting into a new season when you're seeing all other clubs, the likes of Brighton even, West Ham spending fortunes and Liverpool's the only club that hasn't seen the player um, and they've made about 40 to 50 million already if you include the Clark funds and transfers. So it's a bit like Liverpool fans... We should be excited getting into a new season. And I'm not saying I'm not excited. But I'm not over the moon. If that makes sense. I should be really pumped. Do you know what I mean? Excited. And I think. This transfer window will be to the detriment of Arna Slat. If that makes sense. I know he isn't to do with transfers. And it's not his fault that the Zubamendi transfer never got over the lane. Maybe Zuba Mandy's fault, I don't know. But it's not Arna Slat's um, fault. But ultimately, the book does stamp with the manager when it comes to results. And the lack of business so far, I'm hoping over the next couple of weeks that it'll change Liverpool get a few players in. But ultimately, it will come down to Arna Slat um, about the lack of transfers. And the reason why I'm saying it'll fall on Arna Slat for is I think. They're sort of like a, what's the word, like a, a basically a challenge in mood starting to develop amongst Liverpool fans. Again, we're not going to get into a topic about the owners, but it's all linked to that. Um, Just like, like unambitious, so to speak. And when there's a negative mood sort of building, it'll only hinder the team. And I think... The, I've mentioned this before, the slowness of Liverpool's approach this summer, firstly, and their slow approach in announcing, but more specifically, putting out the first Arna Slat interview, really like, took the whole gloss over his appointment, basically. And then the slowness and real lack of activity in the transfer market, again, is like dulling the excitement amongst Liverpool fans and when you actually look at it this summer from a playing perspective the pre I know they're just friendlies we have been seeing a lot of positive signs like style of play looks a bit better 
and more technical. We've had some pretty good results. Like Arsenal and Manchester United. I know it's like just pre-season and you can't really take much into it. But on that side of it, we do see positives. Um, Trey, Trey and Ione is in our big positive as well. Um, so there is positives there. And I know Jamie Carragher has spoken about this as well on like the overlap when he was saying it was all going well until the Zuba Mendy thing. And I sort of agree with that. Um, but I think now it's just starting to like bubble up. The negativity is just starting to bubble up just because, yeah, I think we should have had a saying in by now, let's face it. Um, and I know Liverpool transfer activity under FSG is a lot to be desired for. There has been quiet summers. This is taking it to a whole new level. Usually, when a new manager comes in, you do see like a, not a revolution, but, or an overhaul, so to speak. But you do see like certain players coming in and a few leaving. And what I was expecting this summer um, was a bit of a, a bit of an overhaul. I was expecting something to happen on Mo Salah, maybe Virgil van Dijk and Trent, definitely. Either new contracts or sell them, but nope, nothing. And then, as I've already spoken about the lack of activity, so it's just a bit at the minute. Um, and it'll be interesting to see over the next coming weeks what happens with the transfers because I'm still confident stuff will happen, but I think Liverpool need to pull something out of the bag just to get the fans not back on. Say that's not. I'm not saying the fans have turned, but they give the fans a bit of optimism about the season. Like, I personally, and I did say this in another video, that prior to pre-season, I had Liverpool finish in third. I fancied Arsenal to win the title. But as I was saying the start of this, the pre-season, and again, it's only pre-season fixtures, when I was seeing the style of play, and like they looked a bit better defensively as well. And the talent Liverpool have from a youth perspective, I was getting a bit excited. Like they could possibly win win the Premier League. And I still think they could go close. But again, this is lack of activity just creating a bit of negativity that I think could easily be solved by a couple of big signings. And then all of a sudden there would be a big air of optimism. Because as I was saying there, there was positive signs and I was getting a bit excited. And again, I'll go back to the Jamie Carrier comment. It was basically until that Zuba Mendy thing. And then ever since that collapsed, and now that to talk about the Valencia goalkeeper, the deal collapsing as well. There's just like an air of negativity starting to build and it could have a detrimental effect. So I hope that gets corrected quickly. Because I do think... And this is probably getting into the pre-season or the, the season preview now. I do think from a Liverpool's perspective, it could be a very good season. Um, I'm going to speak of this video on like a, a two-prong task, basically. So I'm going to take it as we stand now, without any signings and without any players leaving. The likes of talk about Diaz and stuff. Um. And then I'm going to take it from the perspective that a couple of players do come in over the next couple of weeks. So yeah, as things stand, I'm going to say Liverpool will finish third or fourth. Third or fourth. Um, but if new players come in, I think Liverpool could win the league. I'm not just saying that from a Bass point of view. Um, I think Liverpool has went overlooked. Because they could have really won it last year. But for like that terrific month. When was it? April or May. That really knocked them. Knocked their wheels off. They probably should have won it really. But um, I think there's their capability to possibly challenge is going overlooked. Arsenal do look strong. City, City. But I don't think City is as good as what they were. Their players are getting old. I've mentioned this before. Um... And then there's the whole thing that's going to come up here about the court case um, with the, the charges and then possibly pep, whatever's going to happen there. 
Arsenal, as I say, do look strong, but again, I, sl I still think they're slightly overrated. Like, spicy Arsenal fans go a bit overboard. So I do think there's an opening there for Liverpool to come through and win the league. But as I say, they still need players to, to come in for that to happen, in my opinion, to get the optimism amongst the fan base. So that's my predictions about the Premier League. I think as it stands, I reckon Liverpool will finish third or fourth. I'm hoping with a few more coming in that they could possibly win the league. But what, what I want to see more importantly from the Premier League is a clear identity. I know people will talk about like they had an identity under Klopp, but I reckon it was actually missing the last two, three years really. Um, yes, there were still bits and spots of Liverpool playing exceptional. The, the old rock and roll style on their club. Like the, the second half against City last year was explosive. Unbelievable. But at other times, like, you didn't know what you were watching from Liverpool. There were so many back passes and it was just frustrating. I loved the, the first three, four years, like every Liverpool fan did, of Jurgen Klopp, which was real high pace, all out attack. Bam, bam, bam. The, the red arrows. Just real, you no know, going at things and putting them to the sword. I really loved that. And there was a real identity. What I'm hoping now on their honest slot is um, that the identity comes back. I know it's going to be a different style of play. He's not going to be that club. I know people like legging in the club, but he's not. But as long as there's an identity there, so you recognise what a Liverpool team is, that looks like they're going to be more possession based. But as long as there's like creativity, vision, and a real like style of play that comes through and they get Champions League football, I'd be happy with that for the season. Um, regarding the Cups, um, Liverpool's Liverpool really, and it all does depend on the look of the draw. Um, obviously they're the, the record holders at the Carling Cup. You can never really rule that out. But I think it'll be more challenging this year for all the Champions League teams, really. Because there is three or four extra Champions League games teams have to play. And so Liverpool and Man City and the other Champions League teams are going to have to field practically an under-21 team or something in the Carling Cup spicy in the early rounds so I'm not going to say the Carling Cup AFA Cup Liverpool is due a bit of a run I know they got the final a couple of years ago but in the win it um, and they got knocked out amazingly by United last year but they could go potentially well in the AFA Cup and then Champions League again I don't actually know what way the format works there the new Champions League I don't necessarily agree with it but Again, Liverpool's Liverpool. You can never rule them out of winning that. The on-field factor. Um, but again, it all comes on back to the main point, which is how good Axel Arna Slot really is. Like I'm excited by him, don't get me wrong. I've liked what I've seen in terms of the coaching and, as I said, the style of play and the passing. But... I'm still not 100% on the personality. It's probably because Jurgen Klopp was there, Klopp was there before. Um, and Klopp was there easy to like get drawn towards. Like, it was just all personality and slot. It's not a real criticism, but it's just like, it's not... <laughs> it isn't as real pulling me in the way Klopp was. So I don't know if it's just like a post-Klopp, like symptom I'm having there but still it takes a bit to warm to him in that regard but coaching I'm delighted with but how the season pans out has a lot to do with him is he actually that good is he poor <laughs> we'll we'll see how that goes and then as I say signings um they're needed they are they can gloss over it all the way they want but signings are needed um and then I'll also stress this as well, the contract situation with Trent, Salah and Virgil van Dijk. It should have been sorted already, as I said, but this could have a real detrimental effect on the season if this drags on. Because come December time, practically, these three players can start talking to the foreign clubs 
and via backdoor avenues obviously they also could possibly talk to Premier League clubs as well and that running over the season could have a real detrimental effect so it's something to keep an eye on regarding I'm going to finish on tomorrow's game Ipswich the first game of the season no matter who's it, who's it's against is always tough um because there's that excitement there from every team that stuff could be possible you know what i mean um so no matter who it's against it's tough tough sorry but i think it's sort of extra tough for liverpool because you're away from home the half 12 factor again newly promoted ipswich they have a raft of new signings there and I actually don't know what you're going to get there. It could be a run over and Liverpool could smash them friggin' 6 now, Or it could be a real banana skin. Do you know what I mean? And I would more rather be playing a team that you sort of know what you're going to get. Um, than going into the unknown. Do you know what I mean? Like last year Liverpool played Chelsea. And I know Chelsea had the Pochettino factor. But you still sort of knew what you were going to get from Chelsea. You know what I mean? Stamford Bridge. Um, but this year it's a bit of an unknown. And then also the unknown with Liverpool. With Slatter as well. And I say the negativity. Um, so it's for me it's a tricky fixture to start off with. To be honest. Um, the team that I think is going to happen. Or be picked is Allison and Nets. Left back. I think he's going to go with Simicus. Um, I'm not sure about Robertson's fitness, but I think he's going to go with Simicus. Virgil van Dijk. I think he's possibly going to pick Quenza as well. Um, right back's a tricky one. Really is. Because I really rate Trent and Bradley. I really rate them both. But I think he's going to pick Trent. And then in midfield, the two sixes. Um... I think he's going to go with McAllister and Gravenberch. And then the other midfielder, I think he's going to go with Zabozloy over Elliot, which I think is a real big call because I think Elliot could possibly deserve it. And then the front three for me just picks themselves really at the minute. I think they're Salah on the right, Jata up front, and Diaz on the left. I think Gakpo will need a bit of team coming back, and maybe Nunez as well. So I think that's going to be the team. My prediction, I'm going to go for a bit of a tricky 3-1. A bit of a tricky 3-1. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, it'll be 1-1 one, one, one for a team being in Liverpool. Get like a 70th minute goal, goal to go 2-1 up. And then it's like, they're holding on, so to speak. I can see Liverpool hitting them on the break to make a 3-1. That's what I'm going to go for, 3-1. And... My, fan, my predictions for the season. I'm going to go for. Premier League. Third. FA Cup. I'm going to go semi-finals. Carling Cup. I'm going to go quarter-finals. And then. Champions League, I'm going to go for semi-finals. I know I haven't predicted a trophy there, but, and it's probably like, I'm not I'm not thinking negatively. I still think that's an okay season, even though I haven't won. Semi-finals, Champions League, semi-finals, FA Cup, third in the league. Uh, as long as we're still stay a player, and honest, that's first season. I think that is a pretty decent season. Um... I'll change my mind if, and I hope I change my mind with new signings coming in. But I'm speaking that as a as we speak with no signings and nobody else leaving. Um, player of the season, I'm gonna go for. I'm gonna go Gravenbridge. I'm gonna go Gravenbridge. I know it was just a friendly. No, it was just a friendly. And again, you can't read too much in the friendlies. I've always been a Graven Birch fan. I do think there's a lot of talent in there somewhere. Great ability on the ball. Has a great turn as well. 
great physical physical attributes too. Um, and I think just by that one match, I saw a lot of like positive. Like he gave me the vibes of Musa Dembele of Spurs. Like Musa Musa Dembele was more of an attacking player, and then was dropped back into like a holding midfield role. Um, and was Brennan there for Spurs, and I think Graven Birch could possibly fulfill sort of that similar role. So I'm going to go Graven Birch as a shock. I'll change my mind. Graven Birch is going to be the like most improved player. Graven Birch will be the most improved player. Player of the season, I'm going to go McAllister. Um, yeah, he's just brilliant. Young player of the season, I'm going to go for Gerald Quenta. Um, I think he's really improving. Player to watch out for, I think. Maybe Nunes. I think this is huge for him. I think this is his make or break. Either this season he fulfills that whatever he has, or he's getting sold. So I think that's the player to watch out for. Um, and then... Just to finish, I'm just going to say players that I hope, or positions I hope Liverpool sign over the next couple of weeks. There was talk about the goalkeeper, so I'm just going to avoid that. Um, a centre-back who can also play left-back. I know there was talk there about Ignacio. I've never really watched him play, so I can't comment on him. Um, and then, obviously, a number six was the Zubamendi thing. I know Liverpool saying they're not... It was either him or nobody. I disagree with that. There's other players out there who can do it. There's just none off the top of my head. But I'm sure there is other number sixes out there. And then it would be good if you get on top of those another attacker. Maybe a right winger who could fill in for Salah or Challenge in his place. And if those players do come in, um, I reckon Liverpool could win the league. I really believe that. And also go really close in the other cups as well. Because... I don't think there's a real strong, strong team around. But if you actually look at Liverpool, they're those two or three top players away from having a real, real, real strong squad. Like, filled with great potential. Filled with a lot of players at the perfect age now, like between 24 to 27. Um, and then you have the, the two, two or three old heads who've been there, seen it, done it with Mo Salah, Virgil van Dijk and Alisson. I think everything would be there for Liverpool to really attack all four trophies. But yeah, what does everybody else think? How do you see the season's go the season going? Watch your predictions for Liverpool. I'll see you all soon.